Morning, frosty start today. Um, yeah, nice and it's a nice crisp winter's morning. It is. Um, I'm gonna go and put a wiper arm and wiper motor on a 420 shovel, and then I've got a an old relic. It's a Solar 140. Um, not sure which one it is. I would imagine it's a LC5 solar not starting um, they've had somebody at it and they think that it is the for the sound of things the EPOS he was calling it an ECU but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the well it depends but I'm pretty sure it won't be a common rail engine in the solars um, unless it's a really really late one can't even think it was the first DX's that had common rail engines I think anyway before my time so we're going to have a look at it afterwards both jobs are within a seven mile radius of the workshop so not big not big mileage to do today so that's not too bad I guess Let's get on with it. So a slight change of plan for the day. We'll do this solar for not starting first and then do the shovel. I spoke to the shovel driver just before I set off um, and he would prefer this afternoon just so he can get a load of wagons loaded underway. So we'll do that. Um, yeah, this solar, this is as close as I'm gonna get with the van. Um, this stuff here, by the smell of it, is what they call sludge for spreading on fields. Very, very fertile stuff, but it's out of water treatment plants. Um, basically human manure. It does smell. Um, not as bad as chicken muck or pig muck, but there is definitely a pungent smell in the air. Certainly put some gloves on before I start work and put that mucky old boiler suit on. I've had a quick wander over to it and it's absolutely dead so first obviously i'll check the battery voltage and just work my way back into the cab um so yeah we'll go from there hmm. lovely so i'm just having a look at this um wiring schematic here so you've got main battery power coming into this battery relay but it also goes out it also continues up here through a fusible link and feeds these two fuses and this fuse here which is for your ignition switch so when i turn the key on in the cab at the minute i've got apparently by the look of it no ignition live so first part of call is to check this fusible link which is in the battery compartment and i've had it before where the um did it, did it, uh, fusible links blown or corroded the pins have been corroded so we'll check that easiest thing to do is check in fuse box one for power at fuse seven eight and fourteen so we'll have a quick look at that that really does smell when you're up close to it um yeah obviously the stuff is savage because it rots away anything that's bare metal um, so I've checked power, basically start with the basics, check battery power, I've got 25 volts here, I've got 25, 25 volts down to here, this is the battery relay, so this won't turn on until you turn the ignition on, um, and that ignition should be fed by this fusible link here, well it's normally a fusible link, somebody's obviously had bother with it in the past, and they've replaced it for this maxi fuse, but anyway, got power both sides of the fuse so we'll go into the cab now and check that we've got power in there so on the fuses in the cab that we should have a permanent 24 volt feed we've only got 2.8 volts and um, so that tells me that there's a bad connection from where that maxi amp maxi fuse is in the battery compartment and here um, so I've just been back over to where the battery compartment is. When I checked 25 volts that I got, I was checking it here and here, but perhaps 
this little creation here has rotted or broken the wires from here to here so I'll try and back probe the back of there and see what my voltage is the other side of this scotch lock. Bear with us. Well I have got 25 volt the other side of that nasty looking scotch lock. Uh, so we'll go towards the cab, try and dig out some harness and see what I can see in here. So to sum it up, I've got 25 volts in the battery compartment and I've only got two 2.8 volts in the fuse board. So that's why the ignition won't come on. That's why the machine won't start up. So somewhere between there and there, I've got a bad connection. Um, I'm not overly familiar with the solars, so I'm just gonna take the belly plate off underneath the cab and see if there's a plug that joins the cab to the rest of the machine. Um, it, it's packed in a bad bit for getting at the belly plate because it's under here, look. Um, of all the belly plates that's missing on the machine, it's not that one. Ha! Um, so yeah, and all six bolts are in as well. So I'll try and wrestle these off the bolts look rusty like, so whether they'll come out or snap, we'll find out in a minute or two. Well, I had my suspicions. There's no plug. Not that I can see anyway. Lovely. So that wiring harness comes out the cab, heads that way. Through this slot, goodness me. Down between that chassis rail there. And out to here. And then between the chassis rail again and into there. I'll maybe try and find the white wire with the red tracer in here. See what voltage I've got. Just pin it straight into the wire. <sighs> with a bit of luck, I've only got two and a half volts here. And I know the faults between there and that way. I would hate it if the fault was that way because well, no, if the fault is that way, all I'm going to do is cut the wire and uh, run it into the cab because realistically, to get in down there at anything, we're looking at cabs off. I'm pretty sure a machine of this age, for what it's going to be doing, pretty confident the fella will just want a wire running however which way possible. Brilliant. Oh dear, I've got 24 volts there. So my problem is definitely from that point into the cab somewhere. That's disappointing. Hmm. Hmm. Could do with... Uh, hmm. They do, we try to start it really, like running a wire in from the battery compartment and swinging this body round and then getting properly underneath it and see if we can open the harness up there. At least then I can run away from there to just under the cab, which will feed everything. I know what I need to do, I just need to do it. <laughs> oh gosh. In among all this look. Um, yeah, let's have a think. In further investigation, what I was looking for was where those wires that feed these fuses permanently, where they splice together as one, because obviously there's only one live wire coming into the cab. Um, I'm taking this plate off and we've got a Bit of a nest in here, so I'll just have a bit dig out in here and see what all we can find. I'm wanting some heavy white and red wires to make themselves known, please. I think it must be about an hour and a half, two hours since I last spoke to you, and um, 
not really much further forward. It's turning into a bit of a carry on this, like, <laughs> got wires pulled out all over the place. I was getting, like, with me power probe here, what I wanted to do was just back feed my permanent lives here and see if we get the machine just started and swizzle around a bit. And when I did, it had like a dead earth seat. I've got an earth. So, started unplugging all sorts and then I found this red wire here which was crimped with these bloody scotch locks onto this red and white wire which comes from my fuse box which is my permanent live to me um, ignition barrel so I thought oh maybe this is shorted out but this one isn't shorted out that's all right like uh, I don't know what to make of it 20 to 3 I've got it going but I've not properly got it going I had to cheat it's still baffling me this like it's not just as straightforward as I first thought and when other people have been in and sort of bypassed things like that it sends you up the garden path of it so you spend half your time trying to work out what they've done I mean there's scotch locks all over the place on it and you know in the back of here just even in here look scotch locks there I think I've worked out that that's for this quick hitch box here which I suppose is fine um, this wire here this is 24 volts but as soon as I touch it to this white wire which would be the original that voltage disappears I've got a short somewhere but it's not blowing not blowing the fuse which is odd at least I don't think it is. Yeah, so what they've done to get it going in the past is run that wire from where that fuse is in there and they've sort of put it onto the ignition barrel to back feed the uh, fuse board here. Uh, but obviously it's developed now and that temporary repair isn't working any longer. Anyway, I've got it out the muck which I'm pleased about. And I've got it cross-carriaged here. I can maybe try and have a bit ratchet around under here now and see what I can find. Although I don't know what I want to find. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, it didn't even, I wouldn't even say it was one revolution before it fired up. It was literally crunk and away it went. Absolutely bomb crazy. Listen to that engine. Faultless. Don't know how many hours it's done yet because the uh, hour meter isn't working. Right, I'm gonna have a square up now. Uh, and try and get to the bottom of this. Head scratch with this one. This is what I thought I'd be struggling on with yesterday. We found that start controller. This one, I know what's wrong with it. But I can't get it to do what I want it to do. Wednesday morning. Um, I was at this machine till about just about five o'clock last night. Um, at half four, I phoned my pal Sean up in Aberdeen. So Sean's getting a shout out today. Um, and I was having a crack with him. Where I went wrong yesterday, they basically, <clears throat> the moment it all went wrong and where I got myself all confused was the moment I got this power probe out. So the idea of the power probe is you put it onto the battery, plug it in and you can give something alive. Um, now I'm always very careful with the power probe uh, because you don't want to give something a live or a 24 volt feed that only wants a 5 volt feed so you can do a bit of damage to ECUs and things like that. 
Um, but what I was wanting to prove with the power probe was to put it onto the batteries and in the cab here is, just as I left it, these four red and white wires here. These four red and white wires are your battery lives, permanent lives, um, which as you saw from yesterday, we're only getting about 2.8 volts. So my plan was to get my power probe, click all these together, give the give that a 24 volt feed, and everything should come on and everything should work. But as you saw, when I put the power probe onto them, it was giving, or it was saying that it had an earth. It's called a phantom earth. And the way Sean described it was it's like you're testing the other side of a light bulb type of thing. It's a bit scientific, but it made sense once I spoke to him. And I don't know if you saw in the videos, but I had my jump leads out. And what I was originally going to do was get my jump lead from the battery into the cab and use the jump lead to feed those four wires. Had I have done that, I would have got the machine to start and run and I would know then that I need to run a wire into the cab. And I said that so many times yesterday, I need to run a wire into the cab. But as soon as I got my power probe out and saw that it had a, an earth, that's when I got confused because obviously there was no fuses blowing that maxi fuse would have blown there'd be fuses in the cab that would have blown if there was a live shot into earth so after speaking with sean threw that power probe back in the van did what i should have done earlier on in the day and i ran my jump lead into the cab and um, fired up off the key stopped off the key everything worked as it should do so i know that the white wire with the red tracer. What has happened, I think, that white wire with the red tracer has had a break in it, so it's not been able to provide the current. It's not failed altogether, but it hasn't been able to provide the current up to here, which is why somebody's put that red wire in. Oh. This one here, someone's put that one in and back fed the back of the ignition barrel to kind of boost that current if that makes sense and i think what's happened is the white and red wire has finally gone which has left all the current to go through that tiny little wire um which is what i believe is the fault so what i'm going to do today being me our electricians this morning i've gathered up that's a new battery cable because that was the state of the link wire. Got a new maxi amp fuse. And I've got some nice heavy red wire which I'm going to run from the battery nice and neatly up into the cab and feed those four terminals at the fuse board. I'll then be able to put my white wire, white and red wire, back onto the ignition barrel like I did last night but with Instead of using this, I had a jump cable and I'll be able to start the machine and that'll be a permanent fix. Simple. Yeah, that power probe is great for doing little bits, but um, essentially the power, yeah, it's a, essentially it complicated matters. There's a time and a place for that. And that is why it often stays in the van. It's alright for some jobs, but that really sort of uh, clouded the water up a bit yesterday and really led me up the garden path. Um, when I got home last night, I was having a look at some of the comments on um, YouTube from the Monday's video when I did that diagnostic for the start controller. Um, and there was a young lad, I can't remember your name, sorry. Um, but he was an apprentice and he was saying, oh, I don't know if I'll ever be able to learn as much as that to be able to do that kind of diagnostic work. I've gone from that on Monday to spending a whole day on this in my head. 
knowing what I need to do, but something like that has just really confused me. So it's all experience and it does help having someone who hasn't even seen the machine, just who's completely separate, just talking to them and telling them what you've got and them saying, well, you need to do this. And you're like, yeah, I do. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> so yeah, it, it's all, you know, you, you're always, by what I'm saying is you're always learning and you know, nothing just comes like that. It's all down to experience and I'll certainly know for next time um, to keep that power probe in the van. Goodness me. So yeah, I've uh, I've got a lot to put back together on this machine and then I've got the rest of the work to carry out. Um, and I was working on it yesterday. That battery lead sort of fell apart. So um, I'm gonna put that battery lead on. And then I've got all this to tidy up in here. So I'm gonna do away with that. That's gonna go in the bin wherever that uh, well, that's that red wire going to the that was sort of spliced into the back of the ignition barrel. That's going to go in the bin. I'll pull all that out, um, and that's just going to get tidied up and left. Um, and basically, that white wire there is what I'm going to replace. Do away with all this junk. So, yeah, easy peasy, yeah. All right, mission accomplished. Um, got my wire running. I've tidied all the wiring up that I've had apart. It's all tidied up um, in here. I've mounted my fuse holder, protected this wiring in here, run a new live in through a fuse, put a new uh, put a new battery lead on it. So, it should start, we'll have a look, Ooh. let's see, look at that, beautiful, beautiful, so, Pull this out. That's that horrible bit of wire from uh, that was feeding the back of the ignition switch. Do away with that. Right. Jobs are good and hooray. Right, there we go. That's it. All up and running. Um, what I did notice. Once I turn the ignition on, um, I didn't notice it at first, but the gauge panel was saying that it was a communication error, a comms error. Um, so I thought I'd better just double check that. So comms error is a communication error between the screen and the EPOS controller. EPOS controller controls things like your uh, two-speed travel, your breaker mode you know your different work modes and things like that um, and what it'll do is sort of electronically control the hydraulic pump so if you hold the dipper arm example over a leaf and hold it um, it'll sort of back the pumps off to stop it stalling the engine but uh, what I've found is it doesn't seem like there's a, well it seems like there's an issue with the EPOS controller um, so the machine starts, runs, as you can see I've had a bit tidy up and just worked it um, but it seems to it's, well, it seems to run, work okay for, for, for what it's doing um, but I'm just not sure whether or not that problem was already there beforehand um, or whether these problems occurred since it won't start the customer did say he had somebody out to it on Monday to try and sort it and how they got to that conclusion he said it was the EPOS controller um, which is why they phoned me 
but the kind of story was it won't start can you get it to start so obviously I've I've got it to start but um, there is definitely an issue with the EPOS control I've checked the powers going in the powers are all there but it's just dead um, so I have a feeling it won't an EPOS controller how or why that's happened I don't know um, like I say it might have been like that for a long time I just don't know but um, yeah it's running it can do its job that it needs to do um, I've tried calling the customer can't get through so we'll leave it at that I think I've spent in more than enough time on it um, so yeah I'm gonna go back to the yard have some lunch and then sort out this afternoon's work Right, last job of the day. Oh, 20 7 wiper arm. I'll show you what's the matter with it in a minute. The wiper arm's got loads of play in it, look. See how this isn't moving, but this is. It's all play inside here. Um, and what happens is it's coming off the windscreen. When I spoke to the driver, I thought that it was loose on the spindle like the other. 420 that we did not too long ago um, and the spindle was knackered but it's not it's tight it's playing that joint there look so got a fresh one and we'll replace it right that's the new one on nothing too exciting there's the old one there's the old one the old one's in the van <laughs> 